Hi everybody, it's Tyler here at the University of North Dakota Signature event here at Mall of America. Check in 16610D Vanadium, uh, who's had an awesome robot so far. Uh, rocking the Hopperbot, one of the top teams here at Mall of America. I love this double park feature that they have that we'll be diving more into, so make sure you pay attention to that. They have an agitator mech inside of their hopper, so more on that. And we'll be diving more into their code and just an overview of this robot, and maybe a couple things they might be looking at change in the future as well too. So let's learn more about Vanadium coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Timothy, we got to talk about this double park feature that your team has. I've already worked here at Mall, so that's super exciting to hear. Talk to me more about uh, how it works, and then if you don't mind a little bit of, like the design and how you're able to integrate it in would be great. Okay, so um, for our double park, we integrate it along with our intake, so you can see our intake can go up and lower down as well. And we have some pistons over here to um, make everything move up and down. So essentially how our double park works is we have a piston over here and on the other side as well that when a ball is right under our intake with the shaft here, um, it pushes the front part of our bot up. And then um, during a match, we will have our back two wheels inside our parking zone, which essentially lifts our entire bot up and we're able to keep the entire rest of the park zone for Alliance for double park and 30 points. And um, in addition, uh, because we have a tracking wheel here, so when we activate park here, you can see this is um, this is park deactivated and then you can see our tracking wheels uh, moving around. When we ac activate park, we have another piston that just retracts our tracking wheel so that everything is 100% um, off the ground and we get that 30 points. How does some of that communication go with your alliance partners in terms of like trying to get a double park? Because obviously you're reliant to get those 30 points on them also uh, integrating with you. So do they have to drive up a special way or like do you have to do it at a certain time or anything like that? I'd love to hear more. Yeah, not much. Um, we nor uh, normally first talk with our alliance before a match starts just to let them know that, you know, we, we, have, a, we have a double park. And then um, during the match when we are trying to do a double park, we try to get our alliance to park first because uh, what we realized in some of our early matches is that when we double park first and then our alliance comes into the park zone, they sometimes hit us off the double park because, I mean, we're resting on a block here. It's sometimes like, will like be a little bit wobbly. So we try to park after our alliance so that everything will be aligned and like no one will move our ball afterwards. So is there like a, a certain second threshold you need them to park by so you can get up in time? Um, we can normally park in around like five seconds, just aligning, driving up, and then using our park macro. So um, we can do that like at the event, very end of the match without too much worrying about like other teams descoring us or anything. And then like on your park macro, I got to ask about that too. Is, is the macro just uh, to put it down or do you, do you like drive forward a little bit based on that macro or anything like that? Um, so we actually, uh, uh, we, we outtake a ball from our bucket to our intake sure. and then we have a distance sensor over here that kind of senses the block is here and then we uh, do the macro. Uh, it might not work on this the surface because like there's different friction on the tile so um, yeah it's but something like that it'll sure. work in the field. Yeah. Well we'll try to get it on the field if you guys <laughs> doing it yep. as well too. Let's pass over to Kira talk more about uh, the uh, bucket uh, mech that you have as well too. You have uh, some agitators in there. Um, and we were talking earlier a little bit more on this uh, top roller, kind of how this all integrates in. Yeah, all right. So after a lot of testing in our bucket, we realized that the box actually got stuck a lot um, around here and wouldn't get to our roller in here. So we added an agitator in here. So on, you can see on both sides, there are rollers um, and there's string attached to it that moves this plate down here. So all the blocks get funneled down here. Um, something else, I guess we, our roller up here can both uh, score onto the long goal, which is the high goal, and then also bring the block all the way into our bucket. Uh, when we were talking earlier, are there any uh, changes you might be looking to make uh, to your bucket? Uh, yeah, so we were discussing actually making kind of like a snail design, so more like a spiral, so that uh, it prevents more jamming, because as I said before, like we found a lot that the bucket still jams quite a bit when um, we're trying to score. So definitely something that Spiral would be something we're considering in the future. If you go to the design, are you, are you potentially sacrificing your capacity at all? Because right now, you're how much are you holding, about like 18 or so? Around right? uh, 20, yeah. Okay. 
Um, no, we were actually planning on maybe holding the same amount for the next block because we found that this, uh, the amount of blocks we're holding right now is perfect for like skills and like um, driving and stuff like that. So we're hoping that we can actually keep this maximum amount of blocks. So, and what I lead into that is a couple of the other teams we've talked to uh, who are doing like the C curves or something like that, mm -hmm. they're only holding like seven or eight and they're pretty adamant that the meta of this game is only seven or eight. Uh, for your team, why do you feel it's important to have like the 18? Yeah, so uh, when we were discussing the game plan for um, driver skills and auton skills for the 60 seconds, uh, we realized that we wanted to be able to hold both the match loaders on both sides and then also the parking, which is around 18 blocks. So then um, having like around 20 would be just like better for us so that we don't end up like tipping any blocks out or something like that when we were scoring or something like that. So we found 20 would be the best for the most efficient game plan. And it's working out great for you so far, yeah. right? Like you're doing really well uh, as we're filming this. Uh, Eddie, let's pass it over to you. We talked a little bit about the macros already uh, for things, but what other things in terms of code do you want to highlight or cover on the spot? So um, a lot of teams, they use odometry, which I was just showing before is just this triangle at the bottom of the block. But an issue with this is that if like the wheel slips or in this game, if we cross parking zone, um, it will actually uh, cause the tracking to be off. And this causes the autonomous route to be off in um, a lot of scenarios. So this is why we implemented, um, we added four sensors, one on each side of the bot. This basically allows us to uh, reset our position based on the walls. And we use trigonometry and, as well as our odometry um, to figure out what is our exact position on the field, even uh, after we cross park. So this is useful in skills as this allows us to clear both park zones as opposed to many teams just clearing the red park zone. And this allows for a higher overall score and a higher accuracy in autonomous surprise. Are there any uh, potential sensors you might be looking at putting on a robot, like anything with like color sorting or anything like that you might consider? Uh, for next bot, uh, we're actually considering uh, adding an AI vision sensor. Uh, this is because um, We've been experimenting a bit around with it, and we figured that it was, it's able to uh, differentiate colors. So since the goals are yellow, uh, this is gonna, it could be approved to be a big asset to lining up the goals properly. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I look forward and to seeing that. Vanadium, thank you so much for taking time. This is an awesome robot, and we can't wait to see how you do here at the Mall of America event. I uh, wish you best of luck throughout the rest of the season, and we'll see you around. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.